Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, this is something that I have wanted to do for quite some time. And um, originally this was going to be a Draw My Life video, but I even like sat down and storyboarded my <laughs> life and shit so I could draw it out on the whiteboard. But I was thinking, I was like, damn, this is really hard to do. And honestly, Draw My Life videos are set in 2012, so I would rather just sit down and talk to you guys and tell you guys my life story this way because I feel like it's more personable and uh, yeah I just want to really let you guys know like where I come from and my history and within the past year this channel has grown a lot so yeah I feel like it's only fitting to let you guys know more about who I am and shit so that's that's gonna be today's video so I'm gonna start off uh, in 1999 where I was born so I was born on June 26 99 to a family of three so originally it was my dad my mom and my sister um, my sister, she was born in 88, so she's 11 years older than me, and there's quite a big age gap between, age gap between us, and I don't really know if I was planned or if I was an accident baby, I never really asked that question, but regardless, I'm here. <laughs> so, yeah, when I was born, we, you know, I guess we were just a normal family. I, I was born in Pineville, Kentucky. So, if you don't know where that's at, it's in eastern Kentucky. So you have Pineville, and then you have the city of Middlesbrough, and then you have the border to Tennessee. So, I grew up in the south, right on the border of Tennessee and Kentucky. So yeah, in that town, there's not a lot that goes on, you guys. It's a really small town. I'm, a, I'm actually going home uh, in a week or two. So when I'm there, I'm gonna do a video where I go to all of my old, ho old houses and show you guys around where I was born and raised, and just kind of give you guys an idea, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, I was born, my dad was a coal miner, that was his job, so he was born in the 60s, and y'all, where I was, where I grew up, that town, there's not a lot of job opportunities, so most of the people would just do like manual labor, like coal mining, and you know, I guess logging, and just like brutal shit like that, and um, most of the moms just kind of stayed at home with the kids and shit, and that's just how it was, you know, very traditional, Bible Belt type place, it's where I grew up, <laughs> and, and Pineville is such a small town, you guys. Like, holy shit. There's not even a fucking Walmart. Like, you have to drive 20 minutes to get to Walmart, basically. But that's, you know, it's whatever. So I'm going to back up two years before I was born. Um, because in 1997 or 98, my dad actually got in a coal mining accident. And a rock fell in his eye and it left him blind. In his left eye, I'm pretty sure. In addition to that, he had really bad back problems. So he had to have back surgery that year. And... Uh, yeah, he ended up just retiring from the coal mines a year or two before I was born, which I'm so, like, <laughs> no offense to his eye or anything, but I'm so glad that happened because it really allowed him to just raise me. It was just me and him growing up. He raised me. By the time I got older, you know, my sister, she was already grown, like, moving off to college and shit, so I, I kind of felt like an only child growing up. But yeah, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. He was the coal miner. You know, he retired from the coal mines. And then I was born, and for the next few years it was just me and my mom my dad and my sister and then uh come 2003 my mom unfortunately passed away from cancer and I get a lot of questions about my mom because I never really talk about her that much and even growing up with my dad and shit we never <laughs> talked about it that often um it was more it was kind of a taboo topic and I would always ask questions here and there and my dad obviously talked about her like it wasn't you know weird or anything it's just I don't know it's just a weird weird topic to talk about in a way I mean it's it's not but I don't know it's not something we talked about often and I never met my mom or any of that side of the family so it was really just me and my dad and my sister so and obviously my sister helped raise me a lot too um growing up but yeah in 2003 my mom did get cancer and she passed away on June 23rd 2003 which was three days before my birthday and that's just insane to me. Um, at the time, obviously, I didn't know what was going on, but to be in my dad's shoes, I couldn't imagine like what he was going through and like what he was thinking there that time because he was left to raise me and my sister by himself, and it was just him. And um, you know, I, I just all the respect to him. Like I have, I have the best dad. Like growing up, he really spoiled me. You know, like, he got me anything I wanted, and we. I grew up in a subdivision, so. It was kind of in the mountains and there was just like a circle of houses and it was really cool because everyone in that subdivision knew everybody and um, I'm just so glad that I 
got to live there because I had a lot of, my dad gave me a lot of freedom growing up and he always did really. Um, he never was a strict parent or anything. But um, yeah, my mom passed away of, I think it was pancreatic cancer or something like that. And she was only in her 30s. So after that, my dad, um, he ended up getting remarried to this woman when I was like five or six, something like that. And it was honestly a hell of a marriage. They argued all the fucking time, fought all the time. I remember they, they had literally got married and divorced four different times. Like he married and divorced the same woman four different times. So it was definitely a toxic situation. Like I remember being like seven, seven or eight years old sitting on the couch watching TV and um, they were in the kitchen fighting or arguing about something and it was really intense. And she ended up scratching my dad's face bro and there was like i remember there was three scratch marks on his face and there was like blood coming down and it was just like a lot and i was eight years old at the time and i was just constantly around that environment but at the same time i didn't really care because i don't know like i was always outside doing something on my four wheeler playing video games i just kind of minded my own business and hung to myself um but that was definitely a, something that happened in my life and i don't know I'm glad that ended. That went on for uh, five or six years, I would say. Um, but during that time, you know, I was in school and shit, and I had a really good time in school. I loved school up until about third grade. And when third grade rolled around, y'all, I had never experienced anxiety or anything like that before. But for some reason, that year it just it happened. And um, I remember going to school crying like every day. And there were there would be days like before school, I'd be nauseous and like sick to my stomach because I had so much anxiety. My problem was I had this fear of something happening to my dad while I was at school. Like I was just terrified that like he would get into a car wreck and like die or something while I was at school, and then I would be left with nobody. Because now that I've gotten older and look back at the situation, um, it was definitely. It definitely had to do with my mom passing at an early age and just being left with him because his side of the family, he has seven brothers and one sister and none of them are really close at all. Everyone just kind of stays to themselves. So I knew, I guess, at that age, it kind of started to click that if something happened to him, I would be all alone. You know what I mean? So it really fucking terrified me. And I had to go to counselors that year and I would be in their office crying, just like so scared that something would happen to him. And I'd be using the teacher's phones in class calling him just to check on him. And eventually it got so bad that he bought me a cell phone in third grade. I remember being, I was so hype about this. It was a red razor. And I'd, I was obsessed with like razor phones at the time. So I thought it was so cool. But yeah, when he got me that phone in between classes, like every single day, I would call him. Like I would sneak in the bathroom and call him just to make sure he was okay. And that's something that I really dealt with that year. And you know. It definitely had to do with losing my mom. And after that year, the anxiety and worry started to slowly subside. So fourth grade, fifth grade, they were really cool years, you know. I still had anxiety a lot and I dealt with that, but it wasn't as bad. And I started to slowly get over it, but then come fifth grade and sixth grade, this is when I really experienced like depression and like anxiety for real. Cause you know, when you're 13 years old and you're in sixth grade, you're kind of figuring yourself out and who you are. And that was when I realized that I was gay, or at least was coming to terms with it. I'd always kind of thought it in the back of my head, but I would just push it away and be like, no, I'm not gay, fuck that. Because where I grew up, you guys, being gay was looked down upon so bad. Like, people say you're going to hell, and like, even in, like, adults, but like, even in school, like, because keep in mind, I grew up in a really Christianly, like, small-minded town, like, small-minded as fuck, but, um, even at school, the kids, they always, you know, if you did something sus, they'd call you gay or like anything like that. And it was just constantly like, I hung around a group, my friends in middle school and grade school were like a group of guys who played video games and were just like dudes, you know, like I never, I don't know, I just felt comfortable with them, I guess. But I always had to suppress a part of myself and like try to not seem gay. And... When sixth grade came around, I was really depressed about it, and I was realizing that, hey, I am gay. And um, that's when I got really depressed, because I thought my dad was gonna be pissed and disown me. I never wanted him to find out. And I just kind of hated myself for it, to be honest. Like I, after you hear like you're going to hell for, for it all the time, and like you get made fun of 
for it in school and shit. It really does fuck with you and it's just something that I didn't want to be. Like, I didn't want to be gay. And it bothered me so bad, like, I remember the summer between 6th and 7th grade, I was so depressed, like, I would just lay in bed, like, during that summer and cry. And I was, my dad eventually started taking me to therapists and I got on anxiety medicine and depression medicine and I saw, like, so many therapists that year and I would never tell my dad what was wrong. So he was kind of left in the dark about it, which, it really frustrated him a lot, but, ah. Oh, it was bad. So that summer, I remember my therapist would have me write down in a notebook how I felt, you know, what was going through my mind at the time. Because it was kind of, it's always been kind of hard for me to talk about my feelings out loud. I'd rather just sit and think things through. That's just how I am. So she would have me do that. And I remember one day I went in for therapy and she was reading my notebook. And I guess she got worried that, like I was going to kill myself or something. I don't remember what the fuck I wrote in that book that day, but it triggered her. And the same day I got admitted to a mental hospital or a Trillium Center, it's the place where like, they give you the rubber bottom socks and shit, like you guys have seen those memes. But yeah, they put me in there for a week, and it was just like every day you'd see a therapist, and like I was on medicine and shit, and they were just like constantly watching you, like you're gonna like kill yourself at any moment, like type shit, it's really weird. Um, and I got out of there, my dad still didn't know about the gay shit, um, so I got out of that, things were cool I guess. I finished middle school, had a great time in middle school, um, you know, hung around my friends still and everything. And then in high school, that's when things sort of changed, um, because I met my best friend, Riley, um, and bro, I kind of left my old friend group of dudes that I hung out with in grade school and middle school, and I started hanging out with her and we clicked, because she was the first person that like I really told that I was gay and I felt accepted by, and honestly, if it wasn't for her, I don't think I'd be doing YouTube right now and I don't know like who I would be right now, because she really made me feel accepted and pushed me to like be who I wanted to be, because even in grade school and like middle school, I was making YouTube videos and it was always my dream, and um, in high school, I kept doing it like I kept making videos in high school and she'd always push me and tell me to keep going because I always thought my videos were shitty and like nothing would ever come of it and I wanted to quit so many times but she always told me no you do this just don't quit you know and that was the year that I also came to terms fully with like me being gay because she you know was you know like she was super accepting of it and we were just we became best friends and we still still are to this day she's who has Kurt, my cat, and um, so yeah, that year, freshman year, I met this guy and I got a crush on him, and <laughs> things kind of went to hell after this because one day I came home from school, it was like October of my freshman year in high school, like freshly new to high school and shit, but I remember I came home this day and my sister was at home for some reason, at my house for some reason, like keep in mind she was like 30 at this time, or late 20s, but it was my dad and my sister at my house. I went home, went to my room, got on my computer, and I had a wooden desk. And I remember writing, I heart this person's name on my desk, like just doodling, you know how you do and shit. So I forgot to erase it, and I got up, and my dad and my sister had to get on my computer for some reason. And they saw what I writ wrote on my desk, and it was obviously a dude's name. And um, so they went to Facebook, looked him up, and they found out that he was a guy. And they were so fucking pissed at me. I remember they like confronted me about it. I tried to lie and there's really no way to lie about it. Um, but I just kept denying it. I was like, no, I'm not gay. Like that person's name is actually a girl. Like it's not even a guy. Like it was so bad. And I remember I talked about this in my coming out video, but my sister was like, mom would be so pissed right now if she knew about this. And like, I don't know, bro, like that bothered me so bad at the moment. And my sister has apologized since, and we've talked about it, and, um, but, you know, during that time, that really fucking bothered me a lot, and, um, my dad, I remember he just went outside, and, like, he was just in silence, and it was just so fucking awkward in the house for a while, like, after that happened, it was bad, and so that finally blew over, you know, high school went on, me and my friend Riley, um, we kind of had our own little friend group after a while. It was me, her, and like two other people. We kind of just stuck together all through high school. And, um, I fucking loved high school, you guys. It was such an amazing experience and, ah, oh, I loved it. So, yeah, come junior and senior year is kind of when we started to let loose and become more rebellious, I would say. Like, I got my license that year. I had freedom. Um, and we just kind of stopped giving a fuck. I was always a pretty good kid growing up. 
like I always had decent grades. And uh, yeah, senior year, when that shit rolled around you guys, we start, I smoked weed for the first time, I got drunk for the first time at school, and it was just, it was a wild time, and I'm so glad I got to let loose. And that's why I say like I'm glad me and Riley met, because if I stuck around my old friend group, damn bro, like I, I don't, I don't know who I would be today. I wouldn't have this confidence, I know that's for sure. Um, so I'm so grateful for my friend, <laughs> Riley. Like having motivated friends around you who are like accepting and on the same like wavelength as you is just like the best feeling ever. Cause you feel like, I was never really close with my family on that level where I could tell them anything. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> high school is over. Had a great fucking time. Then I went to college. I moved away uh, about an hour and 30 minutes away from my hometown uh, to go to school that year and you know, I lasted a semester before I dropped out. I fucking hated college. I remember being so frustrated there. I was like, fuck this, this is bullshit. And um, I never worked a job during that time because my first job I ever had was at JCPenney's my junior year of high school and I fucking hated it because I'd get out of school at three, have to be at work at four and work until closing. And it's like, bro, where's my life? And that was kind of when I realized early on that like I, there's no way I'm gonna sit and work a job from dusk until dawn every fucking day until I die. And I quit that job after a while, my dad was pissed. I constantly was like getting jobs and quitting them. Um, and then when college came around, I just kind of refused to get a job. <laughs> and um, I just, my dad would give me money like every now and then, like $100 a week. And I would just stretch that shit. Like I would spend it on weed and that's basically it, like some random shit that I needed. And um, yeah, so I lasted one semester at college. That was in 2017, fall of 2017. But luckily, I'm so glad I went. I loved it. I met my roommate, Jared, there. You guys know him. And I dropped out, came back home. And that was the beginning of 2018. So I ended up going to community college in my hometown. And I actually went and completed it, and I graduated. So I have an associate's degree. I graduated from there in like May of 2019, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, that was in May 2019. And that was around the time I started doing my smoking videos um, on Bentley Blaze. Like I'd kept it, I was doing my STFE Matthew channel, like all these videos are probably right now, but I was uploading on this channel during that time as well. But that's when I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna start making smoking videos. <laughs> Cause I'd always watched Groovy Mac. And um, even at, like, when I was at college, I moved away for that semester. That's when I really got into smoking. Cause me and Jared would just smoke hella weed. And, the, the summer before that's like when I started smoking like by myself heavily so yeah it was just kind of leading up to it and eventually I was like fuck it I'm gonna do these smoking videos um so I got the courage to do it and it started to get traction really quick it was like the same month I graduated from my community college so and I was working at Walmart at the time and I remember I fucking quit Walmart and um I was like fuck this so I started to focus on the video shit and they popped off and during that summer my channel kind of blew up and that fall I went back to college. I enrolled in another one, like a university, to finish my four year degree. But, and keep in mind I had like 80,000 subscribers at this time or something like that. And um, I was like, you know what, fuck this school shit. I don't want to sit and do this. I hate it. So I quit. And when I quit, I was not only jobless but I dropped out of school and when my dad found out about that he was fucking livid I remember the arguments were so fucking bad and this was also around the time when my family members were finding out about my smoking channel and my dad didn't know I smoked weed at the time like I always kept it hidden and so one of my family members called him and told him about my channel and he got fucking so mad bro he took the wi-fi out of the wall he was like you're not gonna be smoking weed and putting it on youtube while I'm here under my roof and it was just like arguments every fucking day I was like bro, I'm not going to school, shit's trash, didn't have a job, and I was just so dedicated to, like, the YouTube stuff, and, like, I knew what I had to do, because I had this vision, I was like, bro, this is my one-time opportunity to, like, make YouTube happen, and I'm not gonna let school or, like, some bullshit job occupy me from that and, like, make this not happen, so I went for it. I remember that fall, after I dropped out of school, I ended up getting a job at Taco Bell for a day. Most of you guys probably remember this, but I worked there for a day, and then I quit. And then I got, got a job at Home Depot, like, the next month. I worked there for, like, two weeks. Quit that job. 
And then I got a job at the Family Dollar that November, and I lasted there for about two weeks, and then I quit. And that was November 2019. So that was my last job I've ever worked. Um, and after I quit that job, I was kind of just surviving on Patreon money. Like, I was broke as fuck in 2019, that whole year, basically. And I was just trying... I was spending, like, my pennies on buying, like, grams of weed just to make videos. Like, doing whatever it took to make a fucking video. And, um, yeah, I remember after I quit that job, I just kind of floated by for the next few months. I had Christmas money I survived on for a while. And then that April, or March, as you guys know, I got my own house. So, yeah, it was April. So I moved into my house that I just moved from to come to Denver. Um, and I thought I was going to have to get a job again to, like, pay bills and shit. Um, so I was super stressed out that entire month. And then I remember um, I made my OnlyFans at like the 1st of May. I was like, fuck this. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get some money. And I made my OnlyFans, got some money to my name for the first time, got a bag real quick. And I invested that money and started going hard to my videos. Uh, this was last year, so you guys are you know caught up now. You guys know how the story plays out. But ever since then, you, get, you know, like I've just been grinding on this YouTube shit and trying to make make my dreams happen so yeah it's really cool to see where i've where i'm at today i want to do a video where i sit and react to all my old videos that are private i've done one of those before but there's a lot more that i want to show you guys and react to because my journey has been a long one here on youtube and it feels so i'm just so grateful to be like where i'm at today and just to have you you guys support and just to have an audience like it's amazing like i truly am living my dream at the moment and I'm so happy with my life and like who I am and I wouldn't want to experience this life as anyone else so I'm so happy with who I am. Alright y'all, my camera actually died but that was basically the uh, story of my life. I, I hope this let you guys feel like you know me a little bit better. That was the goal of this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, I'm sorry for not uploading for the past month. That was definitely not intentional but between doing all the merch orders by myself and I don't know, I just kind of needed a break for a little bit, so I'm back. I have a lot of cool video ideas coming for this channel, and um, yeah, I'm really excited, and I fucking appreciate you guys, and I love you guys so much for supporting and watching. Um, until the next one, stay motherfucking blazed. <laughs>